Did anybody recognize that? Oh, yeah. All right. Um, I got to tell you just a little backstory. They asked me, you know, like, do you have a song that you, uh, like, you want us to introduce you on? And I'm like, nah, I don't care what it is, you know? Um, and uh, then I got to thinking about it, and I go, but if you do want to use one, Mama Don't Dance. And uh, see, what happened with that song, and it's kind of funny, it just kind of popped in my head to uh, talk about this, but uh, that was my rebellion beginning. Okay, I grew up in the South, in Tennessee. Anybody from Tennessee here? All right. So, uh, as you know, this is the Bible Belt, where, where I came from, right? And so, uh, we weren't allowed to dance in my community. And I never understood it. And so, me and my sister, I had a, a four-year-old sister, and uh, I'd run down the stairs, uh, down, it would, like we'd jump down the stairs as a split level, I'd hit the ground, and then I'd spin around, and I'd go down to the bottom level. And me and my sister, we would just shake everything we had in our body. We didn't know what dancing was. We would just shake everything in our body. And uh, we weren't supposed to, right? And so uh, I never understood. I asked my dad, and he said, it gives you wrong intentions. I didn't know what that meant. Um, and so, but that's what me and my sister would do. And I remember when that song came out, I was like 10 or 11 years old. And, um, and so, and it's all because your mama don't dance and your dad don't rock home. And I'm like, Kenny Loggins knows my parents. <laughs> and, um, and so then I got into the Navy and, uh, uh oh, got in trouble. Anyway, so, uh, so that's the reason for the song. I, um, okay, I've got a confession to make because uh, I text Rick general manager Rick and I asked him um, what do you want me to talk on and he said inspiration and I'm like okay you got it how many of you know that about me do you know this thing about Tim Sims yeah I have a real hard time with inspiration um, there was an occurrence in my life and uh, Robert Allen, you might understand why I'm such a sinner on this concept. But there was an occurrence that happened in my life where uh, I was at the U.S. Navy Special Forces. And uh, me and a buddy of mine, um, we were on break and we were at this hotel and had a beachfront. And, uh, and we were just sitting there and, uh, and we saw these two scuba joes heading out <laughs> towards the water. All right, we call them scuba joes. Um, you can you can get a certificate to go diving, and uh, for just a couple hours or something like that. But we had like a year or half a year, three quarters of a year of training to be underwater. And so uh, I remember we as they were going out. It's kind of funny. Me and my buddy at the same time. As soon as their head went underneath, we started our watch. Just common. It's the way we live. All right. We got to know where our brothers are when they go underneath. And then after about an hour. Hour and a half, I didn't come back up. I look over at their bags, they're still there, you know, and there's nowhere else that they could really go. And so uh, me and my buddy, we went in and uh, we grabbed some scuba jugs and uh, from the dive shop and we went out there. And, uh, and there was a little buoy out there and uh, they had gone down right next to that buoy. And so we swam down and um, and, and we followed that buoy, and the buoy went into a cave. How many in here know about diving in a cave? Okay, Navy divers won't do it. All right, we won't do it unless you are a trained cave diver. And so uh, they found those two guys in the cave. They weren't alive anymore. And so I remember at that point saying, did they have the why to live? Would you say they had the why to live? I would. Mm -hmm. Do you think they had motivation? Have any of you ever had to hold your breath longer than you thought you should? Mm -hmm. Do you know there's something kind of that's made up by our human bodies that really enforce that? You know, you will kill to get a breath of air. And so why in the world 
When they died, they had a big enough why. And so I said, it's not all. It takes more than motivation and inspiration. It takes how. And that was the moment that I made that decision. That I'm not an inspiration guy. I'm not a motivation guy. I'm a how guy. Okay? Uh, I then, thank you. Uh, so I then went on in and, uh, and I ended up in the uh, bomb unit where I would defuse bombs and then I trained other guys on how to defuse specific bombs and I wrote publications on how to defuse bombs because you can have a big enough why with your knuckles wrapped around a bomb but if you don't know how to do it, it it's bad. It's bad. If you write a bad instruction, you'll kill a whole bunch of people. And so I'm very careful about what I put out. How many of you have seen any of my videos on network marketing? Okay, um, if you knew how long those things take, <laughs> they are like bane of my existence. Um, they take a lot of work because I chase all the way back to source every network marketing objection. Who said it and why did they say it? What was their motive? What was their agenda? And so um, you'll find a lot of value there. You'll get a lot of specifics. And then uh, and I also want to just tell you, if you don't know, I've got a, uh, a training that I'm doing on Sunday. And uh, we're going to get real, real deep all right, on the topics about how to do the business as well as some of those things that I, uh, I can't really put out there in the, uh, in the YouTube world, um, just in terms of like, you know, like, and Deanna, awesome job, girlfriend. That was awesome. Right? And, uh, and you know what? I, I could have just silhouetted your whole conversation about that there is uh, something against people being entrepreneurs. Right? There's something that, that, uh, that it's very interesting what I found in my research. But anyway, so, uh, so anyway, so Rick uh, had this conversation. Uh, through text, and then I told him, uh, sure, no problem, sir. Uh, you know, like, I'll figure out how to do it. And so, uh, so Maki, how many of you know Maki? She's yeah. the most amazing girl. Are you, are you standing out here, or are you working somewhere behind the scenes? Obviously. Yeah, okay, I was going to uh, just really appraise you. She said, Tim, this was two days ago, she said, Tim, do you have your presentation on PowerPoint? And I go, I'm still working on it, but I'll give it to you tomorrow at the Partners Council. And so uh, she goes, okay. And so yesterday, she at the Partners Council, she said, Tim, do you have your presentation? And I said, uh, you know, I'm going to work on it tonight when I get home, but I'll give it to you in the morning. And she said, uh, okay. And then so I arrive here, and she said, do you have the presentation? And I go, I'm working on it. I, and so uh, at lunch break, my wife said, uh, where are you heading? I said, I'm going to go sit in the car and I'm going to create my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, as she was going to, uh, she was running off real quick here. I, I, uh, I said, babe, I'm having trouble with this presentation. <laughs> and she goes, why? I said, because I don't, like, inspiration isn't my thing. <laughs> and, uh, and she just smiled. And she said, do you remember running in, me running into your office a few weeks ago? And she told me something, and I'm going to ask uh, my beautiful wife <laughs> to tell you what she said to me. Even though there's an orange line. <laughs> All right, so what did you tell me? So, as he said, he was running out to the truck to work on his presentation that he was supposed to have in a couple days ago. And he said, I don't know what I'm supposed to talk about on motivation and inspiration. And I said, well, number one, tell, tell them that, right? Like, you're not this motivational speaker, so, so to speak. And I just had remembered a couple weeks ago when I was watching something on Facebook of a network marketing trainer who's got millions of people who follow him. And he was doing a Facebook Live and he did a survey pretty much, or like a poll. And he said, how many of you, and you guys might have actually seen this, he said, how many of you guys feel like what's holding you back 
from reaching that next level of success in your network marketing business is mindset and how many of you think that it's tactics, like what to do? And like 80% of them said mindset. And I was blown away because I would have thought it's that they don't know what to do, which is why they're not doing it. So Tim is a trainer and he's been doing a lot of videos and everything is very tactical, it's very strategic, it's formulas, it's, this is how you do it, step one, step two, step three. And so I ran into his office and I'm like, babe, people want motivation. Like you need to motivate people. And he goes, babe, motivation is a substitution for real training and if people had real training and they knew what to do, they would not need motivation. And he was actually working on a presentation for another thing he was doing. And I just thought that was so profound. It's like a hashtag, you know? It's like motivation is a substitution for real training. And that's not to take away the fact that sometimes we need inspiration. We need to feel motivated in order to take action. You know, some days I'm just laying in my PJs on the couch and I'm like, I am so not motivated to make dinner tonight. You know, but it's like, I watch a cooking video on Instagram and I'm like, I am going in that kitchen right now to make some dinner. So it's like, you do need that. But I love what he said, which is when you know what to do, you won't be overwhelmed with this feeling of I'm not motivated. So he's here to tell you what to do. Nice. Or at least that's what he'll be training on on Sunday. So. Thank you. through something and uh, not to prove my point or anything but it's just something that I think might inspire you um, so who in here has been in RX well has been sponsored since last month so in the last 30 days you've been in okay I gotta uh, just ask him what you been in here new? no you you okay so is your sponsor here? This is going to work awesome. Um, okay, so I'm going to ask you, how long have you been here? Probably about one month. One and a half weeks. Two weeks. Okay. Two weeks. Okay, awesome. I'll tell you what, the two of you can step up. I just wanted to, uh, yeah! Good. You investigated her, did you? Uh, I'm Google thing, man. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like me trying to get away with not telling somebody I'm in that room. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, did she follow up with you? How many times? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you eventually said yes, obviously, and now what do you think? <laughs> well, it's not what I think, but it's what I know. That this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to grow and to grow into what you can become and realize your full potential. Okay, so that is incredible and beautiful. All right, thank you for that. And I want to just say, ask you one more final thing. <laughs> Are you kind of ticked off that she bothered you? Oh gosh, that's no, not at all. If she hadn't, I wouldn't have had this wonderful opportunity. Wow. Got the idea? Yes. 
in half the time. Half of the times that I got a customer signed up. Half the time. Just before I followed up, I did a presentation. In home, video, one-on-one, -on -one, coffee shop, you name it, good Zoom. I don't care how you do it. That's what happened. Has anybody ever signed up, anybody without some kind of presentation? How do you sign them up with no presentation? So you were the presentation. I just texted somebody and they joined. That presentation was quick. <laughs> nice. Love it. Okay. So, all right. What I'm showing you is how we used to create to create bomb squad books. We used to reverse engineer. It would be just before the bomb goes boom, what happened just before? And then just before that, and just before that, and just before that. And we wanted to break that chain as soon as possible. Get what I'm saying? Yes. Okay, so if we could break that chain, it wouldn't blow up. So I, that's the way. Here's the way this whole thing started. I sit in meeting after meeting, and this is like in 1989, guys. I would sit in there, and I would hear all these training meetings, and I could not follow the thread. I could not figure out where one person comes across the stage, they wave, and they say, if I can do it, you can do it, and they keep on, they almost keep on walking. And I was like, that, that, I didn't learn anything. <laughs> and then somebody else would say, just do meetings, and somebody else, and I couldn't figure it out. And so I had to just reverse engineer the whole process. And so that's the way that I did it. Every customer that I've gotten, just before that, I followed up half the time. In other words, if you don't follow up, you're gonna lose half, okay? Just before that, I did a presentation. That's always consistent. And just before that, I had to set an appointment to do a presentation. And just before that, I had to contact the person. And just before that, I had to generate a lead. And just before that, I had to have a goal to build the business. That's all there is and there ain't no more. Yeah. And then somebody has the audacity to say, this is really hard. <laughs> hard? Did you say hard? <laughs> yes. Tell me, what do, you, what do you have to do? What's hard? What's hard about it? I don't know about you, but I've got like one of these cool chairs. It's got like three levers over here, a couple levers over here. I can pull the lever and I can lean back. Anybody have a chair that leans back? Mm -hmm. How about one of those that's got that ability to slide the whole back part up so your feet go up on the, on the, on the desk? Got one of those? Um, how many of you have a headset so you don't have to crank your neck? <laughs> You have a head net? You have a mouthpiece? And how many of you have clean drinking water anytime? And how many times do you hear bullets flying through your building? I got it. Anybody have bullets flying through your building while you're doing it? And how many of you can get up and go make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Not GMO, of course. Uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. How many of you can do that? Can you, can you just go into your kitchen? Okay, so somebody want to explain hard? What's hard? About generating a lead, contacting them, setting an appointment, doing a presentation, and following up. What's hard about that? Do you need motivation? I'll tell you where you where the break point is, guys. So sitting right over here, you got to generate a lead. So here's what you got to do. Number one, there's only two choices in life ever. I will, I will not. Make that decision. Okay, I will. When you say I will, then that includes I will get training on this. I will learn how to generate a lead. I will learn how to set an appointment. That means you got to talk right. So one of the things I'm going to do on Saturday, no, Sunday, 
is I'm going to do drills with you guys. So I'm going to sit you down knees to knees and you're going to, it'll get a little harder. Okay? <laughs> you guys all right with that? Yeah. If I do that? Okay. So that's all there is, is, is that you just go through the process. And here's where I have ever, ever seen a breakthrough. Is when I push them to, to generate a lead. And I say, I need you to generate a lead. And they say, how? I say, okay, are you okay with talking to your market? And they say, yeah, I go, good, open your phone. They say, no, I say, good, you know how to run ads and uh, do you have money? If you don't have money, you only have one other option, you gotta go to the lead. I don't care if you're passing out flyers, flyers. I don't care if you're, you know, like, I don't care what you're doing. If you don't have money, you've got to go to the prospect. And if that humiliates you, then you're saying, I will not. Because if you don't have a way to generate leads, you've got nothing to do. <laughs> so if that's, if that's a I will not, then you're stuck. You get it? you got to go to the prospect if you don't have money. If you have money, you can generate leads by running ads. Okay? So every time I push a little bit, I get a lot of upset. I get that, that upset, that jittery thing. Just like before you step out of an airplane the first time while, you're, while it's in the air. That moment is kind of like, oh, you got to trust the parachute guy who did the pack, packing. You gotta trust it, right? And so there's a point where everybody gets the trembles and that's called a breakthrough when you get through it. Until you're through it, it sucks. It's got a suck factor like no other. Until you got to then contact and then you gotta set the appointment and then you gotta do the presentation or send them a presentation. All those steps, once you've gone through them about 20, 30, 40, 50 times, they're nothing. And then you end up with one of these. And by the way, it doesn't matter how long it is. It matters you got that one. Seven-figure earner. Are you kidding me? And all I did was just call. You heard what I said to Stefan. We didn't have a product. We didn't even have Deanna at that time. We didn't have anything. Okay? I had an audition. I chose my partner as well. There's no training in the industry that teaches you how to choose a company. And that's the biggest law in the industry. Nobody teaches you how to do that. Okay? And so you guys have already chosen the right company. I guarantee it. Yes. I'll bet my life on it. Okay? With that,